Hi guys, it's me, Miss Danae. I'm back to read you guys another story. Um, today I'm going to be reading Violet the Pilot by Steve Breen. Um, this is a fun book. It's a good book about a young little girl who's going on adventures. Um, maybe some of you guys have been on adventures the last couple days. If you have, uh, tell me about them. I would love to hear it. Um, yeah, so let's get started. What do we do at Head Start to get ready? If you're ready for a story, find a seat. If you're ready for a story, find a seat. If you're ready for a story, check your hands and then your feet. If you're ready for a story, find a seat. All right, let's get started. Violet the Pilot. By Steve Breen. <laughs> Everyone in town knew that Violet Van Winkle was a little different. For starters, she and her parents lived in an odd-looking house next to the junkyard that her father managed. And while other girls were playing with dolls and tea sets, Violet played with monkey wrenches and needle-nose pliers. Violet was a mechanical genius. By the time she was two, she could fix almost any broken appliance in the house. By four, she could take apart the grandfather clock and completely reassemble it. Since she didn't have any friends aside from her dog, Orville, she would spend hours tinkering with things from the yard. Violet's parents were very proud of her, although they weren't too happy with the time she put a lawnmower engine on her cousin's tricycle. The older she got, the more interesting Violet's creations became. Around the time she turned eight, she was building elaborate machines from scratch. And not just any old machines. Flying machines! Her parents couldn't believe their eyes when they saw Violet zoom by for the first time. They were a little worried in the beginning, but they, could quickly, they quickly saw that she was a pretty good pilot. Careful not to hit the house, Violet's father would yell. And put on a sweater, her mother would add. Violet used almost anything she could find in the junkyard to make her wonderful contraptions. There was the tub bubbler. There was the bicyclopter. And the rocket can. There was the pogo plane and the slide glider and the wingamajig, to name a few. Violet's engineering was pretty sound. The only real hazards were the tall trees and piles of junk in the yard and bugs in her teeth. Ew. Kids at school would see Violet eating lunch alone and make fun of her strange books and greasy overalls. Claude and Clyde, Clyde Mullerooney were especially obnoxious. It's not very nice. Then one day, Violet noticed a poster in the drugstore window. Air show, October 20th, it read. That's only two weeks away, Violet thought. Can kids fly in the show? Is a homemade aircraft allowed? That night, Violet sat in her room thinking about the air show. She knew it would be a good feeling if one of her planes won a prize, and maybe then the kids at school would be nice to her. Violet pictured exactly where she would hang her blue ribbon. She and Orville spent the next oops, she and Orville spent the next few days combing the junkyard for just the right materials. When they had collected a giant pile of stuff, the building began. One day, the Mullerooney twins happened to pass by. Look, it's that girl from school, one of them said. What are you doing? I'm building an airplane, she told them. The twins exploded in laughter, then mumbled something mean as they walked away. Orville barked at the boys, but Violet just went back to her project. Take it easy, buddy, she said. We're too busy to worry about them. Finally, after days of hard work, Violet had finished making her flying machine. She named it Magnif 
magnificent new craft, the Hornet. Wait till people in the grandstand see me flying this, Violet said to Orville. The test flight was a success. Look at little Orville. On the day of the big air show, Violet took off bursting with excitement. Her parents' faces had beamed with pride when they wished her luck, and she thought about that as she flew through the clear autumn sky. She calculated that the trip would take about 20 minutes. She would arrive just in time for the start of the show. Suddenly, something caught Violet's eye. In the river below, a group of people were waving frantically. Violet lowered her altitude to get a better look. A troop of Boy Scouts had run into trouble while canoeing. Violet knew she had help, and fast. It wasn't easy rescuing all the boys, but Violet pulled the hornet with careful piloted the hornet with careful precision. Saving the scoutmaster from gobing over the falls was particularly dangerous. She went and she got them all out. Saved them all. Violet dropped the grateful scouts off at the hospital. Then she checked her watch. 3.30, she said to Orville. We've missed the air show. She turned her plane toward home and sighed. It was a miserable feeling. That evening, Violet had no appetite for dinner. She just went upstairs and sat on her bed. All of a sudden, she heard lots of noise outside the house. She and Orville went to the window and discovered a crowd of people had gathered. Somebody spotted her. There's Violet, the boy shouted jubilantly. There's our hero. The Van Winkle stepped outside, squinting from all the flashbulbs that were popping. The press, the mayor, and the fire, and the police chiefs, even the kids and teachers from school, had all learned of the rescue that day and had come to praise her. Young lady, please accept this medal of valor as a token of our gratitude and esteem, said the mayor. He gave Orville a new collar with a license that read K-9 Hero. From that day on, Violet's parents let her fly where, whenever she wanted, but her mom still made her wear a sweater. The end. I would really like to hear if any of you guys have ever made anything before, any type of inventions. I know I see a lot of you guys at school used to make airplanes and fun stuff like that with all the cool manipulatives that we have. So yeah, if you guys have done anything like that, let me know. Send me pictures. I would love to see it. Um, yeah, so that was Violet the Pilot. I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.